Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at that concept of integration. What is it and why is it there? Well, first of all, let's take a look at some common integrals that we should now be familiar with. The integral of k dx, the integral of kx dx, or the integral of kx squared dx, or the integral of kx cubed dx. Notice that the integral of a constant is k times x plus a constant of integration. The integral of kx is 1 half kx squared plus c. We add 1 to the exponent, divide by the no exponent. kx squared, again, we add 1 to the exponent, divide by the no exponent, plus a constant of integration. And kx cubed, we add 1 to the exponent, divide by the no exponent, plus a constant of integration. So it looks like whenever we take the integral of a simple monomial with the variable x, then when we start with an x to the zero power, we end up with an x to the first power. When we, end up with an x, when we start with an x to the first power, we end up with an x to the second power. We always end up with an, when we, when we integrate, we always end up with a function that has one higher value for the exponent than when we started with. The order has increased by one when we integrate. So when we integrate a constant, like we do over here, we end up with a first order equation, y equals kx. But notice, we don't know what that constant of integration is. We don't know if we end up with this equation, or if we end up with this equation, or this equation, or this equation. In other words, we can end up with an infinite number of possibilities when we integrate a constant. The reason for that is when we take the derivative of any of these functions, the constants simply disappear, and we simply end up with the value k. So it doesn't matter which of these functions we differentiate, we always go back to the original y equals k when we go in this direction. When we take the derivative, we lose all information about what that constant is. It can be a negative constant, it can be a positive constant. Basically, in this situation, the constant represents the y-intercept. We just don't know anything about where that y-intercept is, so we just represent it by a general constant. Even when we integrate, a first order equation, then to put a second order equation. Again, notice when we draw one half kx squared, that is a simple parabola that looks like this. But it could be a parabola that looks like this. Or it could be a parabola that looks like this. In other words, we have no idea where that parabola is situated. We know the shape, we know how far it spreads out, but we don't know where the origin of that parabola is. So again, we add a constant to indicate it could be any number of an infinite possibilities. And that's why you always need to add that constant of integration, because when we take the derivative of these functions, we lose all information about where that function was located. And that's what we mean by the constant of integration. It's simply necessary there to represent the possibility that our function doesn't go to the origin. It can be above the origin, below the origin. We just don't know. And that's why we add the constant of integration. And that's how it's done.